2020 uh, to order. Uh, first order of business, Pledge of Allegiance. Charlie, would you lead us, please? I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, item two, public forum. Is there anyone uh, wishing to address the board in public forum? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hearing none, let's uh, move on to item three. Approve the minutes, uh, June 1, 2020, regular meeting minutes. Is there a motion? So moved. And a second. second. Any comments, questions, changes, additions, deletions, et cetera? Um, yeah, I suppose on uh, in section five regarding the uh, transfer of the property, the open space transfer, uh, I, in the middle paragraph there, it, it says, I, I asked whether there was any indication this would not happen. I also asked some questions if there was any environmental concerns. Okay. Anything else? Hearing none, call the question. Uh, Selectman Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Select Woman Renner. Aye. Select Woman Ruoff. Aye. Select Woman Hoy is also an aye. That motion carries. Uh, item four, uh, Finance Director Mary Jane Malvesi, 4.1, received a monthly report from the Finance Director. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? It's fine, thanks. That's good to hear. I'm going to start with revenues. Um, and if, if you'll note from your revenue report, we are showing um, already $500,000 of a surplus in revenues uh, because May far uh, surpassed what our estimates were based on uh, March and April. Um, so it's a good thing. Um, money was coming in, as you can see, um, tax collection uh, did, did pretty well. Um, and you can see the golf uh, course opened up. So we had um, a significant amount of revenue there. So as things are starting to open up, uh, maybe a little sooner than we had anticipated as we were doing our projections a month and, and two months ago, um, we uh, are doing better than we had originally uh, expressed. So. Any questions? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to comment on the golf course revenues at uh, mm -hmm. almost 50,000 for uh, May. Uh, it's a good thing we opened that course up. Uh, yeah. Um, I, that that may be the one of the single largest months that I've seen in a number of years. So, yes. Is there anything we particularly attribute that to? Did they sell a bunch of season passes that month? I mean, it, it couldn't be strictly rounds of golf, could it? And, and Charlie, yeah. I can jump in because I drive by there every night on my way home. Parking lots packed. I mean, I think people with otherwise sort of restricted options. Uh, well, I mean, that, that makes sense and being a smaller place and that type of thing that makes sense I just wondered if if all the uh, season passes or something were into that month uh, or, yeah maybe I mean I don't know I'm, I'm giving you a pure anecdote but Okay, and I'll, <laughs> I, I can answer that question for you um, if you look at the detail you'll see that um, we brought $15,000 worth of memberships in and $33,000 in green fees alone um, so that is uh, so a significant, significant how, bump. How does the membership fees compared to last year? That I that I'd have to that I'd have to look up. That'd be a you know, that'd be a good thing to know. You know, just see if because I know they they had these these plans and, and marketing and that type of thing, and it'd be uh, be good to know if if we're seeing results yet or not, but okay, next month. Yeah, I can look that up while we're going through. 
Any other questions on revenue? Um, yeah, uh, what, what's your expectation for June for uh, revenue? Uh, well, um, I, I would expect uh, typically tax collection in, in June is, is our lowest month. Uh, so I would not uh, expect that to be uh, maybe half of, half of that. Um, you know, if the golf course continues, I would maybe expect um, at least $30,000 there if the greens fees are the same. Uh, Fire is on, tra is on track with their revenues. Um, I did speak to Mike Shove over the weekend and they do expect to uh, bring in uh, all of their revenue for, for this year. So we have um, some more coming in there. And I, I, it's hard to say maybe another 300,000, but it, um, it's, it could be close. Uh, I, I didn't expect this this month, so. Mary Jane, maybe I'm just having a mental block, but could you speak to the 984% collected rate in the selectman's office? <laughs> well, um, you know, when we when we sell uh, surplus equipment um, and items such as that, uh, we attribute that to the selectman's office because we don't have a specific budget. Wow. When the budget's only seven hundred and fifty dollars, it's not hard to get it. Seven fifty is about what they would bring in in you know raffle permits and you know those uh, fine fees. Yeah, yeah. Th those things that are truly board of selectmen revenues. <laughs> you saying percentages on small numbers can be deceptive? Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Still, it's, it's nice. It's nice that whatever you guys are doing to clear out inventory is good. But, uh, yep. but Mary Jane, what does the $6,600 in remaining revenue as a negative represent? That's what's going to get pulled out of the 73? That's the, that's your surplus. That's, that's an accounting. Surplus in revenue. That's $7,386 um, year to date revenue minus your estimate means your $6,600 over mm -hmm. budget. Okay. All right, I was trying to figure out what a minus is, whether it's just going to go to fund. Okay, all right, I understand. Yes, yeah, so uh, this will eventually drop to fund balance. It's exactly what will happen. Okay. So I, I have to say I was pleasantly surprised um, with May. As we should be. All right. Uh, anything further on revenues? Expenses. Uh, expenses um, are, are, as I've said, each month pretty much um, on track. I, I do want to note that there are three um, in the negative at this at, at this point. I have addressed them before, but I just want to reiterate: um, the insurance line has um, revenues that will come in from the waste transfer and the library at year end to cover their portion um, of the insurance uh, insurances uh, for their areas. So that number will not be overdrawn um, by June 30. Those numbers will, are, are, are being put together right now. Um, the building department um, is, is overdrawn and uh, that reflects the, the amount that we pay for the contracted services where we have revenue that generates um, on, on the other side, if you remember, in, in for the next fiscal year, 2021, we actually legitimately budgeted that line item um, for continued use. Um, it used to be offset specifically by the high school project, so you didn't see the overage um, during that time. But now that the overage is being generated just through the general fund, you're seeing that. So we do have a more appropriate budget next year we shouldn't have this this um, scenario um, and the, the last one is youth and, youth and family services they have grant funding um, that they use to cover uh, much of their uh, salaries for certain um, for, for certain uh, things so so that again will come in and, and won't be uh, won't be over at the end of the year uh, but you're just seeing that now uh, other, um, other than that, um, we um, wanted to address the legal line. It is showing uh, 
almost $200,000 left in that line. We have been doing a really good job. I shouldn't say we, I'll say Mitch and Matt have been doing a really good job of clearing um, some of the union contracts. So that the number, the year to date number is really only through February and March expenses. So we have a, most likely a significant amount of expenses coming through for the last few months that we will carry over any overage into the new year because many of our contracts only went for a one year extension or some of them. Uh, so we will be renegotiating again next year. So any, any amount left over in this line item, um, I will be requesting um, to you and the Board of Finance that we hold that over to cover um, next year. So at, at this point, uh, that's that number really uh, isn't reflective of where we truly stand at this point. Um, the police department is showing a significant amount. We we did know that they reported that they would have an over a, a surplus at the end of the year. Um, we did allow them to buy, make some capital purchases, um, but I, I do expect that they will have um, a surplus at year end. Um, Park and Rec is down, is low, uh, and uh, you know we'll kind of have to see where that goes. I'm not sure, um, you know, what expenses they might have as they open up a little bit. Um, and employee benefits has a significant amount, but of course the um, we have our medical and other expenses to do for June, so that'll come down as well. So I'm still expecting um, our expenditures to come relatively flat. Uh, we will have you know, some small surpluses uh, and, and, and maybe um, some negative numbers in some of the other line items that might balance each other out, but our expenditures should come in pretty close. Uh, like I said, really only the police department is where I might be expecting any significant surplus. Any questions? No. Good, all right. Anything on Lawrence or uh, um, no? I do have a, a question about expenses. I'm sorry. Sure. Um, I, I noticed the line for COVID-19 expenses appears in a bunch of the departments. Yes. Mary Jane, do you have a, a I, didn't, I didn't add it up. I should have. Do you know what it is in total, what we expect it to be, and kind of what that consists of? Well, we expected that number to be somewhere between 180 to $200,000. Um, I do expect expect a significant amount of that to be returned to us um, in with different options that we have available for grants with FEMA and the state. Um, I, I do have some options on how to deal with that. I was hoping to speak with Matt, um, Matt sometime today. So thank you. Good. Just as a, a quick follow up for the board, um, the uh, uh, OPM sent out a uh, notification to all Connecticut uh, towns and cities about a week, week and a half ago uh, on the dispersal of uh, yeah, so the CARES Act money. And I believe the number for us was 239, Mary Jane, is that, uh, is that, is that the right number? Yep. Which exceeds what we had projected when we had to file, which was as of what, May 22nd, I think? Yeah, it was, it was early. It, it was re still relatively early. Um, and uh, we had submitted, uh, uh, I think, the, the 180,000 number, but whatever formula the state's using um, uh, gave us 239. Um, and then uh, there was also some uh, opportunity for uh, FEMA funds um, uh, if, they, if, if our expenses exceed what we're getting from the CARES Act. So yes, Mary Jane what, and I will be talking about it later. Yeah, what they're asking us to do is first put all our expenses through FEMA and to see what we can get back from them. Uh, and then what, whatever balance is left, we will put through the CARES Act. Uh, so uh, even though the number we gave them was 100% of our expenses at the time, um, the hope would be that we receive a majority of that reimbursement through FEMA which will allow us a cushion on the, on the CARES Act side for anything that we didn't know about um, when we put our, our, our funding numbers through. So I, I'm relatively confident that if all of the expenses that we show um, as COVID are put through and approved, we should re have the ability to recoup all of it. Although um, we know working with FEMA in the state that 
they don't approve everything we might think is COVID related. Um, so there, there might be some uh, delta there. Good, thank you. Uh, medical. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, geez, that number just keeps going up. Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, kind of meaningless at this point, though, because it's so, there's so much deferred maintenance that we all exactly. have. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we were, meaning what? The, the, a lot of people you think have not been getting care. Absolutely. That build yeah. up is going to sort of burst out when people can get back to their doctors. Yeah. So I think we have to be really careful to not make any quick decisions about the the June 30th fund balance. Absolutely. That's Excellent observation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Right. And we've, we've, we've been working with our consultant, uh, Joe Spurgeon, to identify uh, some of the trends that they're seeing uh, relative to defer, deferment. Uh, and they are in complete concurrence with what Sue uh, has just mentioned, that uh, uh, there will be a rebound at some point. Uh, I think, uh, you know, pick up a newspaper and you read uh, who's deferring immunizations. Uh, uh, you know, people aren't going to dent the dental offices hadn't been open until recently. So there's, uh, you know, there's just a, a significant now in terms of urgent health care. Yeah. You know, someone has a heart attack that's in the numbers, right. Uh, or someone, you know, has to go to the emergency room. It's in the numbers, but uh, I, I, I completely agree. So. Right. And, you know, just in um, mid May, they opened up elective surgeries. So, you know, we, and, might see a small uptick um, in those expenses for people who feel confident enough to go out and do that. Um, but, yeah. Right, and one thing you need to remember, that that's for that projected six million, which is really more than that because there's, uh, what, uh, 980,000 of IBNR. Um, so there's nearly seven million uh, in that fund. Um, as we go through the next uh, three months or 90 days of tax deferral, uh, that cash is available to us. Um, in addition to uh, the over 10 million we have in fund balance. So uh, let's remember that uh, you know there, there may be some budgetary, not budgetary, but some revenue pressures based on the deferment. Mm -hmm. uh, so moving that money anywhere doesn't make any sense until after we get through that window and that, uh, uh, that 90 day window plus a reasonable period to determine what kind of deferral has taken place on the health care side. Right. right. So one of the strategies we have in place is we're going to wait until the end of the month to make our contributions into the medical plan. Should we have some huge um, struggles with our revenue um, each month, um, it is possible that we would hold off even making our um, contribution to the plan at, at that time. But those are all decisions that we will discuss as we move forward. I would not uh, be in favor of putting off our payment unless, you know, there were extreme revenue pressures. And uh, the other thing with the, the $6 million, I think it's going to be a lot more than three months because uh, just from personal, you know, conversations, you know, even things such as knees are considered elective surgery. And it isn't as if all of a sudden now that things hopefully are winding down people are running out to to do their surgeries that they put off so it could be a, a lot more than three months it could be six months or a year that we experience the deferral effect so I, I would i would struggle with deferring payment though it, you know we'll have to see how the revenue uh, that would not be Trace, we've got to get rid of some people. Yep. Uh oh, who was that? We've been bombed. Yeah, we've been bombed. <laughs> Zoom support. Right. Well, it's better than some of the other bombs I've heard of. Yeah. Yeah. But we do have to be careful. I know that you know that that's a problem with Zoom. Uh, Can I suck your dick? Can I suck your large dick, Daddy? Oh, buddy. I'm where I got to work on my German, apparently. <laughs> what are you doing? It is inevitable. You cannot meet me. There I we go. I just removed suggest, it. I strongly uh, suggest that those who are using their laptop, you know, 
make sure that all your antivirus stuff is is used after this meeting. There's other people in the waiting room and I'm afraid to let them in. I don't I don't know if there's more. Do you see them, Matt? Um there's like five others in the waiting room. They all came up at once. Can you send a message to those in the waiting room to call you directly or call the selectman's office directly to verify that they're in there? No, I don't see a way to uh I don't I don't see a way to do it. You no, can't message? We have, no, we have a message turned off. Well let's just send a general message to everybody. Can we you know if they're in the Oh, if they're in the waiting room, they're not in the meeting at this point. Okay. I would just they're in the waiting room, just... so they can't hear. Yeah. No. All right. All right. And is there anything we can put a sign in front of you? Can they see? No, if they're not in the meeting, they can't do anything. No, they're not in the meeting. No, they can't hear or see anything at this point. I say we don't even, don't even admit them. No. No, and they don't I... admit them. And if there's a crisis, they'll call in and something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let them file an FOI uh, complaint yeah, after the fact. We've got a reason why. So. Yep, we've already been bombed today. So. Okay. Um, I think we were just concluding medical. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anything further from Mary Jane in terms of the finances? Yeah, I wanted to report on our refunding. Ah, thank you. Uh, I knew you had. I knew you needed something to do there. <laughs> Uh, so we recently had the refunding um, of our two bonds, and I, I'm happy to report it went exceptionally well, exceptionally well. Um, we're showing a $3.1 million savings or 11% um, over the years. Uh, if you remember, we estimated um, $73,000 of savings in fiscal year 21. That number is over 200000 um, for next year. It's uh, s similar uh, overall savings as, as we might have anticipated, but just spread out um, differently. Um, S&P ratings, um, they affirmed uh, our rating, uh, thought that we were doing um, a really good job of coping with everything through COVID, and we had the management and the procedures in place um, to deal with that. Um, Regardless of what of what might happen, um, I thought it went very well. Um, we will be using that credit rating moving forward. We're already already started working on our regular bond um, sales that we normally have in August um, with our short term bans um, due in August. Um, so I would would anticipate that that would go um, as well. But um, Matt, if you'd like to make a comment, everything was great. I uh, just uh, want to thank Mary Jane. She does most of the legwork relative to uh, the uh, materials that we have to provide and present uh, to the uh, uh, to, to the bond to the rating agencies, uh, and uh, she just does a does a tremendous job there. Uh, and then uh, we actually spend some time. We prepare. Uh, uh, it was about a twenty-five page uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation with our bond advisor. Uh, we had a couple of run-throughs, practice sessions, and um, uh, it just went, as Mary, Saint, Mary Jane said, it just went very well with the, with the uh, rating agencies. The call was terrific. And uh, again, um, I don't know, have we shared with everybody the, the we'll, we'll get some documentation yeah. out in terms of the bond councils, the, uh, the, the, rate, the rating opinion, uh, and you'll see that it's very, very strong. Yeah, I'd love to yeah. see that. I, I don't even have all the final documents yet because <laughs> um, um, it was just last week. So as soon as we have um, something to share, I will send that to everyone. Just out of curiosity, does that um, legal expense go into general legal or is that part of the part of it? In the bonding? That, that's part of it. Um, we did um, receive some premiums from this um, so that all of the bonding costs will, will be covered by the bond issue itself. And Lou, just as a, a follow-up on that, yes, uh, the, there are legal fees, and that would be bond counsel. Yeah. Uh, and then there are, there are consulting fees, which are uh, our bond advisor. Are so there are two. By the premiums that come back. And that's correct. It, 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 this year, for this particular um, reissuance, it was about ninety-five thousand dollars in expenses, all covered by premiums um, for the through the bond. 
So no expense to the town. Tremendous. Wow. Thanks, guys. Yep. Unequivocal good news. <laughs> when did that happen? Yeah, I was going to say. This is twice today we've had good news. You got to start being careful here. <laughs> but I, 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 I do want to make a comment, though, about, uh, you know, I know in this meeting I'm preaching to the choir, hopefully, but just for the general uh, public to appreciate why bond, our, our rating and our financial position of strength is so important because, you know, that not only do we uh, have the opportunity to take advantage of these savings, but just to be, uh, you know, allowed in the, you know, the bidding process, you know, to be in this position is, it's a valuable asset right now because I don't think it's going to be like that forever. In the market. Agreed. Agreed. Time, timing was everything in this particular <laughs> instance. Yeah, but, you know, it, it's good to be in a position so you can take advantage of the timing. I mean, if we... We're not in a strong financial position, you know, whether the timing was right or wrong, we might not have been able to do it. So, you know what I'm saying. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. And uh, MJ, thank you very much. Um, let's move on to item five, Park and Rec Director Rick Maynard, 5.1, discuss and take possible action on the purchase of a 16 foot floral mower from Turf Products off of the CREC contract. Rick, uh, I see your here, uh, posing as Terry Buckley. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're, sharing her, uh, we're sharing her laptop. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Matt. Um, so we have, um, can you see me all right? Because I'm only seeing like my eyeball, eyeballs up. There you go. Um, all right. So we have a, a 111,000 bonded for purchase of a 16 foot mower that's been approved. Um, we uh, would like to purchase the motor un under CREC through uh, Turf Products. It's a Toro motor mower. Um, and the total is $98,090.17. That includes a, uh, a little shade canopy for the guys so they're not sitting out in the sun on it. Um, we have two mowers, uh, two big mowers. That, they go out um, every day uh, from mid-April through early November, so about seven months. Um, and we cut about 100 acres. Some of the most of the uh, irrigated fields, we have to go back a second time and mow them twice a week. And so uh, the mower we have now is, uh, the one we want to replace is a little over 16 years old now. And uh, it's a workhorse, you know, but we need to uh, make sure that it's, it's available and ready to go when we need it. Uh, a great example is last week, both big mowers were down for a while and we had to mow a lot of those areas with our small six foot mowers. It takes a lot longer to do that, obviously. So it's, um, uh, we found that we, if we, if you approve this, we can get it within uh, five or six days, uh, which would be great for us. And um, we'll have both two mowers up and running and able to take care of all the properties. Are we trading in and or getting rid of the old one in some way now? Well, it wouldn't be a training. It's a different company. The one we have now is a Jacobson and uh, oh. we're going to go with a Toro. Um, but I think, you know, usually we end up uh, putting those, um, uh, Pam put, puts a bit, we put a list together and Pam goes out for uh, um, auction, I guess it is for Okay. Them. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we just move that part along. Or, okay. Yeah. And, and Rick, does uh, this thing pretty much come off the truck and, and get to work? Is there some uh, 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 expense or time or effort required by Public Works or anybody in your department? I mean, is the thing pretty much as is and ready to go? Yes. Yep. We don't have to put it together. <laughs> it comes ready to go. And uh, it's an over the ro road machine. So we don't have to worry about trailer or, or anything. You know, we just drive it over the road like we do now with the, uh, the Jacobson. Rick, if I'm not mistaken, this was one that you had requested two years ago. Correct. Uh, which the Board of Selectmen pushed off to last year uh, in the bond package, correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. Any other questions of Rick? I'll move it. I'll and second it. And a second. Uh, call the question. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Selectman Federici? Aye. Selectman Haverda? Aye. Selectwoman Renner? Aye. Selectwoman Ruoff? Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. Motion carries. Rick, thank you very much. Thank now, you. Slide it over for item number six. All right. She's right here. <laughs> 
Park and Recreation Seniors Program, Terry Holland Buckley, 6.2 is to discuss and take possible action uh, on Town of Guilford Title VI program. Terry. Hi. Um, as good part morning. Of, uh, good morning. As part of the 5310 grant process, which is where we uh, purchased the buses, um, we had received one approximately two years ago, and we're in the process of ordering the second one now. Um, one of the requirements of that for this, this second round was that we show the town's Title VI program. Uh, and working with Karen, we dug and really found, couldn't find, even though I'm sure we are following all the policies of it, we really didn't have a formal policy in place that was adopted that we could find. So um, I took all the guidelines from DOT and uh, wrote up a plan, which I have, have provided. We did have to have this in place in order to receive this grant. The state has accepted the version that I sent for the 5310 grant, um, but uh, Pam Millman, and, and I agree, it's probably good to have it as a formal adopted policy because there are other grants that you're going to need a Title VI program for. Actually, Karen has already borrowed, used this grant or this uh, Title VI policy in order to apply for a recent housing um, grant. So it was really uh, helpful to have it in place um, for other future grants. Basically what Title VI is, is it deals with limited English proficiency individuals and it's having a plan in place that if there is an individual where English is not their primary language and they need assistance, that we have a plan in place for how to um, be able to assist that individual so that they're, they have equal opportunity to any of the services that we offer. For mine, it was specifically the bus service. Um, even though we have very, very limited experiences that it, you know, that has happened at least in the past, it, we, if it comes up now, we would have a policy on how to handle it and different services and things that are available to assist. Um, if the plan is adopted, there are a number of follow-up things that we'll have to do, and I'll work with Karen and um, probably Tracy because some of this has to go on the website. We have to post things. The whole policy should actually, in there I say it will uh, be given to all department heads in a department head meeting. All of this was finalized, at least my part of it, in March, and then, you know, everything went crazy. So. Um, when things calm down, that's something that would probably need to happen is have this distributed to every department so that they're aware of it and they know what they would do if they came upon a situation like this. I, wanted, I just want to take the opportunity. Terry, this is a tremendous piece of work that you did. Um, these, uh, as anyone who has dealt with uh, some of the state and federal requirements, uh, it's not always easy to identify exactly what they're looking for. But Terry, mm -hmm. you did a tremendous job researching <laughs> it. Uh, worked, work. with your, worked with your peers, you worked with the state, uh, you worked closely with Karen uh, and Pam. And as you just mentioned, this does have uh, a wider use, uh, a wider application for us uh, as we uh, used it as part of our uh, recent uh, grant for the uh, small cities housing, uh, uh, housing program. So uh, uh, a terrific job, Terry. And, uh, you know, it's sort of outside your normal line of work. <laughs> Um, no, we needed it for the bus grant. So. We needed it for the bus, and, uh, and 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 you took the bull by the horns and you ran with it. So, so thank you very much. We need a motion to accept the policy, or what, we, what do. Okay, we do. We do need I'll a move. motion. I'll Early move. moves. Is there yeah. a second? Second. Second, Sandy. Sandy, second. Uh, call the question, Selectman Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Selectwoman Renner. Aye, but I. Select I I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I understand. So the policy that we're adopting is the document labeled Town of Guilford Title VI program. Is that what we're actually adopting, the, that entire? It seems, yes. it, seems, it seems very specific to the senior bus situation. So it... Well, where, where I did that, I put specifically for the transportation program. So yeah. if, if you could, I guess, just pull those parts out and make it specific to the housing authority. Which we have done. That type of thing. So I, I don't know. I guess, I guess that would be an option to pull out anything that's specific to transportation and then go with that um, for the general policy. Uh, that would be a decision. Yeah, this is a frame. This is a framework, uh, and and, this, and we're approving the policy as written, with the opportunity to modify it um, as needed for the application itself. 
the, 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 the guts and the underlying um, uh, commitments and policies uh, will remain uh, consistent and same for each application. Okay, so we're, okay. All right, aye. <laughs> it's, like, it's like woman Rua. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. Uh, motion carries. Terry, thank you very much for a tremendous thank you. job. You're welcome. Uh, item seven, uh, Health Director Dennis Johnson, hardest working man in Guilford, uh, 7.1, consider and take possible action on approval of the Wright Pierce engineering contract for design of water main project in the amount of $33,480 and authorize the first selectman to execute the amendment. Is, is there a motion? I'll move it. Second. Second. Dennis, you want to tell us a little bit about this? Good morning, Matt. And Good like morning. It. Yeah, this will be the fifth amendment from our contractor, Wright Pierce, to increase uh, costs related to design and inspection of the water main project. This specific amendment is to pay for some additional design changes in some of the complex uh, water main crossings, such as the Danube Avenue um, elevated water main and the Tuttle's Point Causeway, where we had to change from a buried water main to a directional drilled water main. Um, there was additional design fees and costs for these two projects, um, as well as additional inspection costs. Um, part of the additional cost also uh, relates to uh, making certain the project is in compliance with Connecticut Department of Public Health requirements. Um, there was uh, additional time spent for MBE, WBE compliance and overtime costs due to the site inspectors extended working hours. So there were some really legitimate extra costs um, uh, behind this amendment. Um, and I've evaluated them and I feel that they are all legitimate uh, add-ons for the cost for construction and administration. This proposal also, this amendment proposal has been sent to the State Health Department for approval. As well, the Commissioner of Health approved the amendment last week um, after reviewing it to make certain that the costs were actually legitimate uh, costs for this project. The uh, total amendment amount is $33,480, which will increase our construction and inspection or our design and inspection budget up to um, $430,305. Um, the, the good news is that the project cost for rock removal now appears to be have a $214,000 surplus in it uh, because of uh, unexpected lower amounts of rock to be removed. So it's likely that this project will end with a surplus um, even uh, with these additional expenses uh, for engineering design and inspection. Um, so that's basically the reason be behind this amendment. Um, it's the fifth amendment we've had mm -hmm. throughout the project history uh, and all of them have been approved by the Department of Public Health and the local town of Guilford for expenditure and um, be glad to answer any questions I can on this amendment. Dennis, thank you very much for that uh, thorough summary um, and also the, uh, the good news that uh, the, the project is uh, expected to come in under the original, well, not the original, but the uh, most recent uh, budgetary numbers. Um, and I'm sure that uh, that will be good news to some of the homeowners uh, who will be paying the assessment. Um, are there any questions of Dennis on this, uh, on this amendment? I have a question and a comment, really. Um, comment first, which is, Dennis, thanks for including specifically the recommended motion in your memo, which is really helpful to know exactly what we're going to put forward, just as a practice point. That's helpful. Um, and, 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 and not, not that then immediately sound critical. I mean, it says authorized, it should be the first selectman, right? To execute the agreement. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So with that, you know, uh, knit out of the way, I, I was curious on the, um, 
how MBE, WBE compliance is, is affected here? I mean, the right peers, is, is that with regard to their potential subcontractors? Uh, what, what's that have to do with this? Um, I, it was it involved reviewing the MBA, WBE selected contractors that the True Blue Construction Company uh, had obtained. Um, there's a certain amount of um, evaluation and uh, background review of the selected contractors uh, that the, uh, the uh, selected minority contractors that Wright Pierce has put forward. So there were some changes in the, some, in the contractors initially um, selected because of uh, scheduling conflicts. I think the original MBA contractor could not meet the um, schedule. And so they had to go back out and advertise for additional MBA contractors. And Wright Pierce had to review the qualifications uh, and credentials of those contractors. So there was more time involved with that. Okay. So that's a problem that they're dealing with. It's not something the town has to direct right. address. Okay. But it's a good point, Lou, because uh, some of the uh, the loan funds are dependent on the contractor complying with all MBE, WBE uh, um, state uh, uh, dictums. Okay. All right. So, uh, Lou, do you want to make that motion? I, I, I'll make the motion. I, I as think I already. I think oh. I already made it. You already made it. That's true. It's already. It's already well, already well, been done. done. And seconded. All right, call the question. Uh, Selectman Federici. Aye. Selectman Havreda. Aye. Selectwoman Renner. Aye. Selectwoman Ruoff. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. Dennis, before you leave, um, I just want to take the opportunity to uh, once again thank you for the, the work you've been doing through this pandemic. Um, you know, I jokingly have referenced Dennis as the hardest working man in Guilford, uh, but he, there is no doubt that he has been under significant amount of pressure. His workload is, has been so, so heavy. Uh, two Fridays ago, I made him take a day off um, because he just looked so tired and, and he admitted he needed some time. So uh, he, he disobeyed me uh, because early in the morning, he went online and checked to see if there were any COVID cases and sent out the notification as he does every day. Uh, but between his normal day-to-day -day stuff, the, the contact uh, tracing, the follow-up that's being done, just want uh, everyone on this call and, and this our board to understand what an outstanding job Dennis is doing uh, through this uh, crisis. Well, not only through this crisis, but this particular water main project certainly didn't go smoothly from day one to now. It, it, it's a major accomplishment to, to have... Uh, to be at this point in time with the pandemic going on on top yeah. of it all. I mean, all these contractors and, and being sure that, uh, you know, all of the regulations are met. Outstanding job, Dennis, and, and we really appreciate it. Thank and you for your supportive words. Appreciate that. And Dennis, congratulations on your new grandchild. Oh, <laughs> oh. thank you. Which I can't see for three months. So. I know. We're, we're sorry. I'm sure you get lots of pictures. <laughs> Thank you. Good. All right. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, item 8, Environmental Planner, Kevin McGee, uh, 8.1. Discuss and take possible action on the award of bid number 10-1920, the harvesting of hay on Potter, Potter uh, Parcel, County Road, subject to approval by the Agricultural Commission. Uh, Kevin. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, another hay license um, to be approved. This is a smaller lot that we have on County Road. It's actually going to be the first time we're going to be licensing this um, parcel out. It's a 13 acre um, property with six and a half acres of um, hayable fields on it. Um, we we'll sent out the bids and we received one uh, proposal back um, from Wetterman Farms up on West Street. Um, Paul Wetterman is the uh, farmer there. He's, their family has been multi-generational farmers uh, in the town of Guelford in that region for, I said, multiple, many generations back to the 1900s, if not earlier. Um, he has the proper equipment to do the work. Uh, checked with uh, reference of his and uh, very 
positive um, feedback on his uh, performance on that property. Um, his proposal, due to since this is the first time the town's licensed this piece out, is kind of in poor hay quality. So his proposal is um, similar to what we just saw before with the Northern Heights property there with um, the first two years um, being no fee followed by um, $50 um, fee um, for the remaining periods. Um, the um, uh, which really doesn't calculate, I mean, out too high for revenue for the town, but it's an expense that the town's not covering in terms of having the, the fields cut. Um, I mean, fifty dollars and six and by six and a half acres basically gives us or gives us about three hundred twenty-five dollars a year uh, revenue. But it says not about the revenue; it's just about um, getting the fields um, properly hayed and maintained. This is an old scenic field up in North Guilford um, um, that the neighborhoods actually helped with the town of Guilford and the land trust to um, protect and preserve this area as a natural um, hay field there. Good. Any questions? No. Nope. Is there a motion then to uh, approve the or award the uh, uh, bid uh, to uh, Wedeman Farm um, to hay the Potter parcel, uh, the nearly six and a half acres at uh, fifty dollars an acre? So moved. And a second. 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 Call the question, Selectman Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Selectwoman Renner. Aye. Selectwoman Rua. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. Motion carries. Kevin, thank you. Um, yep. 8.2, consider and take possible action on a conservation easement for Great Hills Estate, uh, located at 376 State Street. Send to Planning and Zoning Commission for a mandatory referral under CGS 8-24 and set a town meeting date. All right, so this is a um, almost a three acre conservation easement being provided as part of the subdivision approval on um, State Street. Um, it's just above I-95 on the left, um, across from Kinchback's um, tree farm in there. Um, there is there was four lots approved as part of the subdivision. Um, so we're looking at um, attaining um, three acres in conservation easement. I'll try to reflect the map here again let's see if it how well it works on my little camera here uh and that's the best i can get it um the red lines you'll see are the conservation easement areas um several along the edge of a pond and the stream area um, which is shown in blue and then wetlands area is um, shown in green line and also there's a vernal pool which the um, wetlands commission was um um, wanted protected um, located within lot one and two of the subdivision uh, lot one and two of the subdivision there um, so this is going to follow our standard um, conservation easement agreement which has been um, reviewed by town council and the council of the um, developer and um, when once approved here and the PNZ referral would have to go to a town meeting at some point in time, however that's going to happen. Kevin, could you locate uh, Great Hill Estates a little bit for us on State Street? Yeah, it's just north of um, I-95. So as you go up um, State Street, you go underneath the highway, up the little mm -hmm. um, mound there, you'll see there, be seen, there was a for sale sign uh, in front of the property for a while. Okay, it's that property. Okay, I that property there was yeah. a large uh, um, house there and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's just a, it's just above the Sachem Hollow um, over yeah. housing. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. All right. Is is it just me or is it confusing that it's called Great Hill Estate? Since there's it, a great there's a Great Hill up north. Yeah, it's confusing. Yes, definitely okay. confusing. Somebody's got to work on the uh, on the nomenclature here. I guess it's something. It was um, it's some historical name for I guess at some point in time, but <laughs> yeah, sort of, sort of Great Hill would be a better title for that location. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the developers Great. picked the name somehow. We can't help that part though. But yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, they could have called it Mountain Lion Estate, but that wouldn't be very honest either. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's where um, I'm looking for um, 
approval to move on to um, town meeting um, as it gets scheduled out. So our mission here is just to accept the conservation easement on the wetlands portion, basically. Um, the, yeah, the three acres of conservation easement there and move to um, town meeting. Okay. Um, conservation, just to, to sort of, because this is kind of related to the topic that was on the uh, our minutes and the, the discussion we had last week. The yeah. conservation easement means the town doesn't own it, these people own it, but development on within the parameters of the easement is restricted in perpetuity. Correct. It's open yep. space, essentially, that remains on their nickel. Right, and then we police the easement. Okay, now, in, uh, just out of curiosity, is that open space portion taxed at like highest and best use? How does that work? Do they get a little bit of a break? Jeez. I do not know to tell you the truth. I guess I'm looking at Pam. I believe they do. Um, and Pam, Pam does, I believe so also. So. so they get the benefit of that space. Right. Adjacent to their development. Hmm. Yeah, it's a, it, it creates a buffer. Right? Yeah. 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 I don't know the specifics of this development, but normally what happens is they're allowed a, a different concentration and then that type of thing for the rest of the development. I got gotcha. you. I, I haven't seen this specific plan at this point in time, but so that's that the open space. You can sort of compress some of the other uh, parcels. Yeah. Around. Yeah. You change the configuration and make it work. Right. All right. Well, right. thank you for that. And, 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 and Lou, the genesis of the uh, conversation around easements at the last meeting, there were a couple of questions. Uh, I'm not sure one, was answered completely during the meeting. And that was, well, when do you use a conservation easement and when do you acquire the open space? Uh, in subsequent conversations Pam and I had with George Craw, uh, the preferred methodology is a conservation easement, uh, but there are occasions where it is to the town's advantage to acquire the property because it's adjacent to or would uh, allow for um, usages that might not necessarily be allowed under uh, a straight conservation easement. And that was the case with the Smith, uh, the Smith tree farm, right. uh, the Vigliotti development, uh, right. because quite honestly, the, you know, the, the middle school kids used um, part of that property as a cross country course, uh, car, their cross country course. And also uh, the property there is adjacent to a couple of other town uh, parcels. So that was the rationale, and it, and, it, and it was huge too. It was fifty some odd acres. It's correct, and the, the important thing with conservation easement is there's no public access to it. Where if we pick up the land in fee, we have um, public can have um, uh, access. access to the property for hiking and stuff like that. Tremendous. Thank you for the follow up, both of you. You're welcome. And everybody who dug thank, you can thank Pam for that because she was the one that asked the question at the outset. <laughs> All right, so is there a motion to um, approve the conservation easement for Great Hill Estates located at 376 uh, State Street? Uh, send along to planning and zoning for the mandatory uh, referral uh, under CGS 824 and set a town meeting date uh, at a time to be determined uh, through scheduling with Tracy and- I, Matt, I already- the legal notice is on there. It's going to be June 30th at 830. It is June. Yep. It's going to be Perfect. June. Um, so moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Uh, okay. Uh, call the question. All in favor. Selectman uh, Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Selectwoman uh, Renner. Aye. Selectwoman Rua. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. Motion carries. Kevin, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, item nine, discuss and take possible action to set a public hearing for uh, Monday, July 20th, 2020 to consider programs that shall be included uh, for submission in the 2020 Neighborhood Assistance Act program. This is the annual uh, dog and pony show um, for, for the Neighborhood Assistance Act uh, applicants. Uh, and there are several of them that uh, show up every year. Um, so, is there a motion to set that hearing date? So moved. Second. And a second. Call the question. All in favor? Selectman uh, Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Selectwoman Renner. Aye. 
Selectwoman Ruoff. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. Matt, Thank you. Just to point out, uh, as it says on here, to, to those folks who just may be watching, obviously, um, this this scheduled as a an in person meeting July twentieth. At this point. Okay. Oh. Just sort of saying it's the first uh, summer in a long right. time of uh, something that's uh, a little return to normalcy. Right. Subject to change, obviously. I understand, understand, but I like the way you're thinking. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe by that time we'll be meeting uh, in, in, in public. I think actually we, we probably could start uh, relatively soon. Um, but, yeah. Well, that meeting that's set on the 20th is a, is a Board of Selectmen regular meeting anyway, right? With just yep. the public hearing first? Yep, yep. Yeah. But it's at the Green Community Center. Right, yep. for more spacing problem. That's exactly why. Okay, got it. Awesome. Got it. Good. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Wouldn't that be great? Exactly. Um, all right, uh, item uh, 10, appointments and resignations. Received resignation from John Toman from the Harbor Management Commission, effective July 31, 2020. I'll uh, make that motion uh, with uh, uh, appreciation and regret. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. Uh, call the question. Uh, Selectman uh, Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Selectwoman Renner. Aye. Selectwoman Ruoff. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. 10.2, act on a reappointment of Fred Brisbois to the Veterans Advisory Joint Committee for a term to expire uh, December 31, 2023. I'd like to make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Call the question. Uh, Selectman uh, Federici. Aye. Selectman uh, Haverda. Aye. Selectman Renner. Selectwoman Renner. Aye. Selectwoman Ruoff. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. 10.3, act on reappointment of Dave DeMeo to the Standing Building Committee for a term to expire June 17th, 2024. I'd also like to make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Um, before we move on to the vote, I just want to, uh, and as someone pointed this out re recently, we now have a full slate and an alternate on the uh, Standing Building Committee, which has been, which has, has not occurred in at least 10 years. Uh, and I think Dave DeMeo uh, is personally responsible for recruiting, identifying, recruiting, and signing up uh, um, uh, the, the other members. So call the question. Uh, Selectman Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Selectwoman Renner. Aye. Selectwoman Ruoff. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. Item 11, committee reports. Uh, anything of uh, note? Um, Actually, the, Sandy, there is something that uh, we'll cover under uh, new business um, for the uh, affordable housing project. So, okay. Lou, anything? Uh, no, nothing to report. Nothing, nothing no updates. Okay. Um, correspondence. All right. Um, anything there? Just building permits? Um, I have one that I received, uh, which I will be sharing with you. Um, and it was a, a very interesting request related to um, uh, a couple of framed um, documents that are across from the tax office that have to do with um, the uh, purchase of the land, which is now Guilford. Um, and the contention is that the signature on the, on that document was, uh, by one of the, uh, elders, the uh, female, uh, elders of the tribe, which is indistinguishable as a, uh, signature. Um, this is, uh, the, the objection is in the taking of the land, um, ostensibly the, the accusation is that it was an unfair taking of the land. And they are asking that we uh, consider um, having it uh, placed in, uh, in, in, a, in a more appropriate place than a town hall in one of the uh, uh, historic uh, records room at the library uh, or in one of, the, one of the museums. I will forward you that, uh, that email. Um, 
but I just wanted you to be aware of it because uh, the individual indicated that they would more than likely be surfacing this on a, uh, a social media uh, um, group uh, of in, in the local area. So I just wanted to pass that along to you. And I apologize for not getting it to you sooner. So the person, the person is, the person's request is to just put this document in a more public place? No, oh, in a more historic uh, context, uh, a museum or at the library. Okay. Well, uh, I'll, I'll share it with you and you'll see, you'll, you'll, okay. you'll get the sentiment. So the point is get it out of town hall. Exactly. Not, not where it's going to go. Exactly. Um, I think it, given what's taking place around the country, this is not the only thing we're going to be seeing. Uh, I, there, I know, I know that there, there are significant conversations going on about the Guilford High School mascot again, uh, which had, prior to the uh, pandemic, had been on the administration's radar to deal with this spring, but it is now uh, back full force at this point. Okay. Um, Old, anyone else with correspondence? No. Old business. Anyone? Uh, new business. Uh, we need to add to the agenda. Um, there are three, there are two items, uh, and I would like to add a third. Um, the first one is uh, a discussion to take possible action on one year extension of the fire chief's contract. Um, is there a motion to add that? And that will require an executive session. I'll move that. Second. Yeah. Call the question, Selectman uh, Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Selectman, uh, select woman Renner. Aye. Select woman uh, Rua. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. Uh, the second item to add to the agenda is to discuss and take possible action on a letter of agreement with the Mutual Housing Association of South Central CTA, uh, Connecticut, uh, doing business as neighbor works, uh, New Horizons, and authorize the expenditure. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. And a second. Second. Uh, Selectman uh, Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Selectman, uh, select woman Renner. Aye. Select woman Rua. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. Um, also, I want to add an item, uh, a third uh, item, and I forwarded this to you just uh, prior to the, uh, to the meeting this morning, and it is the um, uh, authorization of the replacement of uh, a vehicle for the deputy police, the uh, deputy fire chief, um, uh, Mike Show, in the amount of, I believe it's a little over 35,000. This is the normal replacement of their vehicles. Um, however, the um, opportunity to get this particular vehicle at the price uh, is one that we need to move rel relatively quickly on. Um, so, is there a motion? I'll move. A second. second. Yeah. And a second. Selectman uh, uh, Federici. Aye. Selectman uh, Haverda. Aye. Selectwoman Renner. Aye. Selectwoman Ruoff. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. Uh, so let's go back to item uh, number uh, one, um, which we will take in executive session. Uh, so uh, no need to discuss at this point. Item, the second item uh, is the mutual housing agreement letter. Uh, any questions or comments? Let me, let me just give you a, a little bit of a background here. Um, as part of our negotiations with uh, the uh, folks at Neighborhood, uh, NeighborWorks New Horizons, we had, as you probably recall, uh, decided to carve off uh, just the parcel that they're gonna use. Uh, in doing so, um, based on the fact that we own that entire area, including the area where the, um, uh, the, the, the childcare facility is, we need to create a subdivision. We need to file a subdivision application uh, in order to, to, to actually sell, not sell, but to donate to them uh, for those purposes, that specific piece of property. Uh, so in my mind's eye, it's the town's obligation uh, to, um, to file the subdivision to, 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 to allow us to do what we look, are looking to do. Um, however, uh, it is our understanding that the applicant, uh, NeighborWorks, uh, can apply for and potentially get reimbursement for any and all of those costs uh, through their, their grants. So you'll see that this letter um, basically um, says, we will go ahead and pay for it with the, full, with the expectation that uh, uh, NeighborWorks um, will, in fact, apply for reimbursement uh, through the, their various grant programs. 
uh, and uh, if received, they will, uh, they will re uh, remediate those funds to uh, the town of Gilbert. That's the long and short of it. Um, so first off, is there a motion to, uh, a motion to approve the letter of agreement? So moved. Uh, second. Second. Uh, second we have. Uh, all right, any further discussion, any comments or any questions? No? Call the question. Uh, Selectman Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Selectwoman Rua. I mean, Renner, sorry. Aye. Selectwoman Rua. Aye. I will say that this was, um, has been addressed over several months and the committee is aware of this. So um, it sounds complicated, but it's not. And hopefully the town will be reimbursed funds. Good. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Selectman uh, Ruoff, well, that was a yes. Uh, Selectman, yes. Hoy is, uh, Selectman Hoy is also a yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether anyone had an opportunity to open their email uh, while uh, we we're on here. Um, the uh, contract is for replacement of his vehicle. It's a twenty. This would be a twenty twenty uh, Tahoe PPV four by four. Uh, in the amount of $35,466.68 uh, to uh, Sullivan's Northwest Hills in Torrington. And that's where uh, the, and this, again, this is for uh, Deputy Chief Show's uh, replacement vehicle. And what was the logic of why it has to be done now? You said something about timing? Yeah, timing, the availability of the vehicle at this price. It off the state like contract for that unit by the way what's that it seems like a good price for that unit what does the it ppv is. stand for some sort of police uh, package i have no idea <laughs> yes 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 okay it does. okay uh, other than taking oh yeah other than taking advantage of the price situation at this point was this vehicle scheduled for replacement Yes, it is scheduled for replacement in the two thousand in the twenty twenty one budget. And Charlie, I'm looking at uh, the the uh, the document. Yeah, the, it's got flasher system, spotlight, speaker wiring. Uh, so that that. Or what's going to happen to the existing vehicle? Um, that will either get bumped down uh, or will uh, will be uh, sold at auction. Matt. With the mower. And just so the Board of Selectmen can have a lot of revenue this next year. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, we, you got one last month and here's another one. <laughs> Over a thousand percent. And a tractor. So, you know, it's, yeah, okay. Let's move all this stuff out because we don't want to be paying for building for storage of this stuff. Absolutely. We're uh, for Selectman Hoy. Say that again. Matt. Matt. Yes, Ken. Yes. Um, just to follow up on that question, um, the de the existing assistant chief's vehicle will be bumped down. Um, the original uh, a Ford Explorer, which was originally uh, the vehicle that was assigned to uh, former first selectman Sam Bartlett, will be retired. So we'll move down. This vehicle um, that is going to be bumped down has over 100,000 miles on it. And it was um, in the budget uh, for replacement in the 2021 uh, fiscal year. Good. Excellent. All right. Um, yes, is there question. a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Second. Second. Uh, any further questions or comments? Call the question. All in favor? Selectman Federici. Aye. Aye. Selectman uh, Haverda. Aye. Selectwoman Renner. Aye. Selectwoman Ruoff. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, we will be going into executive session, but uh, I'm offering a public forum. Um, uh, anyone left, or did we bump everybody from public forum? Did we, we bump all the bombers, right? Uh, I'm going to invite uh, um, uh, Mitch Goldblatt, 
um, as well as uh, Ken Wilson in, at least for uh, item 16 in executive session, um, as we have two items in executive session to consider. So um, is there a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Well, we act, don't we actually have three items for executive session? Yes, we do. Okay. That's why, right. that's why um, uh, Ken Wilson is being asked in. So you're right, Charlie. Okay. All right. Um, call the question. Selectman Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Selectwoman Renner. Aye. Selectwoman Ruoff. Aye. Select uh, person uh, Hoy is an aye as well. Uh, yeah, and motion carries. So Trace, I'll uh, shut I'll shut the recording off uh, as of now. See you, Mary Jane. Okay, uh, we're uh, back uh, out of executive session. Uh, the meeting is uh, now being recorded once again. Uh, and uh, during uh, executive session, there were three items considered, no motions uh, made, no actions taken. But as a result of that, there, uh, I think there are some actions coming out of this. The first of which uh, is uh, to approve uh, the uh, agreement, the, the uh, employment contract of our uh, fire chief, Charles Hershaft, uh, for the period of one year. Uh, at no, uh, at, at with the wages uh, being frozen at the 20 uh, fiscal year 2020 level. Um, is I'll there move a, that. And is there a second? Second. Any uh, further comments or questions? Hearing none, Selectman uh, Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Uh, Selectwoman Renner. Aye. Selectwoman Ruoff. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. Uh, the second item uh, is the uh, uh, successor agreement between the town of Guilford and the Guilford Supervisor Association uh, for a one year period, July 1, 2020 to June 30th, 2021. Uh, this contract agreement, uh, this agreement includes uh, salary treatment, um, a cleanup of some language that was in, in the uh, document uh, that related to older outdated healthcare plans. Uh, as well as the reclassification of one employee from a manager to a supervisor. Uh, and the last one, what was the other? Uh, vacation. And the vacation. And the addition for a one-year period only uh, of the opportunity for them to carry over an additional 10 days in addition to the five days that they're allowed to carry. Uh, and if uh, someone leaves before uh, September 30th, they are not entitled to, uh, to take uh, uh, payment for those days. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. A second? Second. So, call the question. Uh, Selectman Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Selectman, Selectwoman uh, Renner. Aye. Selectwoman Ruoff. Aye. Thank you. Uh, Selectman Hoy is also an aye that, that, that carries. Uh, the last item was a uh, uh, request from employees to carry over and use vacation from fiscal year 2019 to tw uh, 20 to fiscal year 2020 21. There were two requests. We have covered those. Um, is there a motion to approve? I'll make one motion for both requests. They're both in your office. Yeah, thank you. Is there a second. And there's a second from Charlie. Call the question. Selectman uh, Federici. Aye. Selectman Haverda. Aye. Selectwoman Renner. Aye. Selectwoman Ruoff. Aye. Selectman Hoy is also an aye. Um, with that, I don't think we have any uh, further business to, uh, to conduct. Um, just uh, one item, possibly. Uh, the, the, the July 20th date is, at this point, scheduled to be an in-person meeting. Uh, if people are uncomfortable with that, I would like to, I would like to know that. Let's socialize that. Um, but, uh, you know, once again, uh, getting back to some sense of normalcy is, I think, an important part of the recovery uh, and, and, and moving forward. Um, by that time, uh, there will probably be some uh, larger uh, gathering sizes allowed. Uh, I would still anticipate, even at that meeting, having it as a Zoom meeting uh, in addition to uh, the in-person. 
that so folks could participate remotely. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, if and please, if any one of us feels uncomfortable, we won't do it. Okay. Yeah, I, and I guess I would sort of both ask and and presume maybe I don't know. We're going to be wearing masks. I mean, it's um, as long as, uh, as, as long as you're inside the six foot the six foot distance. If we set this up so that we're it's big enough. You may not have to wear it during the meeting, but it's probably a pretty good idea to wear it. Um, Other than getting a specific recommendation, not to even dump it on Dennis, but I mean, it's, right. it's, it's we will. probably prudent. Yeah. I, but, but I mean, as long as we have a coordinate, I think it's pretty important for us to sort of all be doing the same thing and not have some sort of situation here where we're doing one thing and somebody's doing something else. And telling, and telling people to do something else. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I think it would be great if we can do it in person. I, you, you've already indicated it will be in a larger space at the community center. And if it makes sense for all of us to wear masks, then we all wear masks. That's the way it is. Sure. What about the July 6th? Do you still want that one to be a total Zoom? Yeah, at this point, I think so. Uh, now, we can, you know, if the guidance changes between now and then, Okay. Uh, but I don't think it's going to, I think the, the, the dates uh, have been sort of set in stone, the 20th of uh, June, which got moved to the 17th. Uh, and then the next phase three is supposed to be July 20th. So uh, effective okay. July 20th. Okay. So that's, and that's the expectation is by that time, there will be uh, relaxed rules um, regard, regarding uh, the use of public spaces. In fact, we're already uh, moving to reopen the community center for things like French classes and some of the other programs uh, with Dennis's approval uh, based on, uh, you know, setting up the appropriate social distancing, uh, the wearing of masks and um, no more than 50% capacity. Uh, so we're, 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 we're starting to move to that effect, uh, much like gyms and, you know, and restaurants and all the other. Right. Places. And I just want to clarify, we do have a special town meeting on June 30th at 830, which is a Zoom meeting. It's a Zoom meeting. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Anything else for the good of the order? With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. This one is this is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good day, everybody, and thank you. See everybody. Thanks. Bye. Thanks Bye. Bye. Happy Bye. Father's Day, everyone. Ah, uh, thank you, Sue. Well and Matt, good luck with graduation. I assume you're part of it. I am. I'll be there. Okay. I don't have to speak, thank goodness. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Okay. All right, guys.